Hello and welcome to Ginger Prince. Now today we're going to be working on a training Koran beer. Um, I've been wanting to make one of these for quite a long time now just because I'm into my martial arts. Um, more more the sort of open hand sort of fighting style but I do want to get into some sort of weapons training as well. So I'm going to be looking mainly um, at the Koran bit now. Uh, I, I follow Doug McCarter on, on a few different platforms. I think he's an absolutely amazing martial artist and he actually specialises in the cram bit. Um, and after watching him on Forge and Fire, he's one of the people that actually inspired me to get into this uh, this craft, if you like, or this skill. So what I wanted to do is I just wanted to create my own version of a cram bit, um, 3D print it, and actually use that as a training weapon. Um, I wanted to do a little bit of a spin on it. I wanted something that was going to fit more my sort of needs. So I'm very into my Japanese sort of culture and, and art and things like that. So I wanted to put a sort of um, a, a Japanese style onto this Koran bit. So I've sort of gone for like a, a Tanto kind of style. So rather than the uh, blade of the Koran bit being nice and curved and sweeped around, I wanted something that was a bit more square, a little bit blocky, um, also looking a little bit more tactical, just to make it look that little bit more mean and aggressive. Um, I will be updating this and, and adding to it. I want to add like a sort of a little ridge where the knuckle ring is. So I've got like, like a little edge that I can actually strike to. Um, and now I just want to add a few more features to this actual blade just to make it fit in hand slightly better um, and just to make it look a little bit cooler basically. Um, but what I did is I opened up uh, Shaper 3D, which is the, the software that I use. And as you can see, I've sort of roughed this out on a piece of paper roughly to where I wanted it um, got a few rough measurements and then all I'm doing is I'm just copying that into shape of 3d and getting those sorts of um, guides of basically where I want everything to go um, now I'm no professional um, the shape of 3d is quite an easy program to use um, the only way I've sort of taught myself to use this is by watching videos on YouTube and sort of following a few of the tutorials on the on the actual software itself but I've got no 3D um, sort of design background at all. I've got no 3D printing background, anything like that. Um, this is off all off the top of my head, basically self-teaching myself and watching a few other videos. So um, I'm sure there's a lot easier ways to do this than the ways that I've done this. Um, but yeah, this, this is the way that I find best for me. It, it sort of, for me to do it this way, it makes more sense in my head. I'm probably doing it the long way around rather than the, the quick, simple way, but th this is just how I've decided to do it. But if you have got any tips for me or any videos I can watch, please drop a message down below and let me know. So I've actually 3D um, designed two versions of this. So this version you can see now is I wanted to print it in one solid piece. Um, just because I didn't want to have to try and glue it together in two halves and anything like that. So uh, the first one I did, I designed like this. And you, obviously, if you've done any 3D printing, you know you will have to put some supports just under where the blade area is, um, just to, so it has like a, a secure platform for it to print on. Um, the other one that I decided to do was I actually did split this in half um, and actually have it in two halves for it to be printed as well. Um, Again, there probably is another way of doing this. Um, I'm not entirely sure if there is. I, I did have a quick look to see if there was a way of doing it, but I couldn't find a way. So for me to split this off, the easiest way to do is just to take a section, um, divide it in half, and then just mirror it on the other side. And that way I'd have two, two halves as it was. Um, that was the easiest way I found to do it. Um, it seemed to work, it did the job. And um, yeah, what I also did is instead of just gluing this together, um, I do want a mechanical connection on this as well. So what I actually did was I, I just put a few tiny holes in the handle of this because um, I, I actually ordered some very, very tiny screws off Amazon just for this specific sort of stuff. Um, anything that I'm sort of making tactical wires, I want it to have sort of, if I'm going to be using it for training and things like that, I do want to have a, a mechanical connection there um, just in case I do do something and, and it falls apart mid-training. So you'll see I'm just making some tiny tiny holes there I think they were like 0 0.75 so it's about 1.4 millimeters in diameter I think 1.5 millimeters in diameter um, and yeah that that fit these tiny little screws that I've got perfectly which you'll, you'll see that I'll, I'll put together shortly um, but yeah I wanted to try both versions of this um, just because I feel like the solid piece will be a lot more better for training whereas this I, I can add some glue to this just to try and get it to um, stick together a little bit better but to be honest I think the little screws are going to do fine so that's how this turned out and um, I think this looks absolutely incredible I really like the look of it 
Um, but as I said, I will be doing a few little adaptions to that just to make it a little bit more tactical and just to look a little bit more cool. So the slicer I use is Astro Print. Um, it's free, which I think is absolutely brilliant. Really easy to use. Um, you can change all the settings you want. So as you can see, I'm changing the quality to 0 0.08 millimeters just so I get smaller lines so that the, the bit looks a little bit nicer on the surface. The shell I'm gonna leave, um, the infill, I did have a mess around with the infill. Um, I normally keep it about 15 to 20% just for something that's going to be a quick print. Um, but if I was going to do this in the future, I'd probably do it sort of about 50 60% infill density just to make it that little bit more robust. Um, I'm printing it out of PLA, which is it's, it's a good plastic. It, it's got some sort of give in it, so you can be quite, quite rough with it. It's, it's quite strong. Um, not a big fan of ABS because I only recently found out that ABS is actually... Um, that the fumes that it gives off is actually carcinogenic and I didn't know that at the time of, of 3D printing so I've sort of stepped away from ABS I'm sort of sticking to um, PLA now. You can see there I've not added a build plate adhesion either. Normally I'd add a brim around the outside just so that the um, the model has got a little bit more surface area just to help stick to the, um, the printing plate just because sometimes you'll have the corners will start to peel up um, and it will just, when you put the two halves together, it will just make a bit of a gap and it will look a bit unneat and tidy. So all the settings are there. Um, I print my PLA fairly high um, on temperatures. I think I could probably go a little bit lower, but I like to go on the higher side um, just because I feel that I, I get a better, a better finish overall basically on, on the print. So you can see here, 62 layers in total. Um, it says it's gonna take um, roughly three hours but I am going to speed this up on my printer just because I want to try and get it done a little bit quicker. But you can see the infill there, you see where the holes are. Now the printer I use is a Creality Ender Pro 3. Um, it's probably one of the, the cheapest out there on the market, but it's probably the, the best price on the cheaper side. Um, Trace, I've had a few little problems with this, but to be honest, it, it's a brilliant little printer. I can't fault it. Um, the, the models come out absolutely spot on, I'd say 95% of the time. It has a few little hiccups here and there, but um, as you can see from this, it's, it, it prints pretty decently to us. I love the finish. Um, I printed it in black just because I wanted it to look a little bit more tactical, a little bit more cool if you're going to be training with it. Um, and as you can see there, this is the, the solid model. You can see it's got that, that support thing just underneath the blade. Um, and you can see I've peeled some of it off and you can see it leaves that rough edge, um, which is a the issue you have when you put supports on. Um, there probably is a way around this to get a nicer print, so if you do know, then um, please drop a message down below and let me know. But you can see I've started to peel that off, and then what you'd have to do is either take some sandpaper or a craft knife or anything like that, and just scrape most of that off so you can get a nicer finish. Um, but to be honest, you could probably use a Dremel, use a little bit of sandpaper just to Dremel most of that off, um, and then maybe get like a, a buffing wheel attachment or something like that just to try and take the, the scratches and all the marks off just to give it a bit of a polish to make it look a little bit nicer. Um, I think some people use uh, some form of acid, I don't know if it's acetone or something like that. I've got to do a little bit more research into it, but that just gives you a nice smooth finish. And you can see on the, the handle as well, it put the support there, um, so I would have to shave that off. And if you shave that off, you can see on the actual handle, it does leave these sort of white scuff marks, which don't look too great. So we'll go over to this one that I made in two halves. It, it came out absolutely perfect. It was stuck flat to the bed, which was quite lucky. Um, and these are the little screws I've got now. These are the screws they use in things like mobile phones and, and things like that. They're tiny, tiny little screws. Um, bought these off Amazon. I think I've got a pack of a thousand sort of different assortment of screws. And I think it only cost about seven quid, which is absolutely spot on. Um, but I've not, I've not put any glue on this just yet. I wanted to just put the, the actual screws in here itself. Um, just just to see how well they would hold to be honest um, I may need to add a little bit of glue just around the ring finger area um, and also on the actual blade part just because see they do come apart um, and if one of those does snag on something I'm worried it may bend and, and break so I probably will if I do start using these uh, ones as training I'll probably add some glue in there um, just to sort of make it a little bit of a stronger connection. But you can see these screws are absolutely perfect. Um, I made them holes just the right size and these are actually self-tapping screws as well. So they will bore that hole out a little bit more just to make it that little bit more secure. But as you can see, I think that looks really, really cool. I think the screws actually make it look even better. It makes it look a little, little bit more tactical. Um, and yeah, this thing actually works perfect. It, it, it grips in my hand lovely. It's a perfect fit. 
the uh, ring around the finger is a lovely size um, obviously it doesn't have any weight to it so if you're going to start doing some flicking and flailing I'm not sure what it's called but it's going to be quite difficult with this so yeah really really happy with the way this turned out um, and I hope you've enjoyed the watch so that's this this build finished really really hope you enjoyed watching this video if there's something you want to see me design um, drop it down in the comments below absolutely anything you can think of as long as I can fit on my printer I will design it um, and post that video as well so thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next design